Why are nuclear reactors dangerous? Why have we had some terrible nuclear accidents? Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, the ones in Japan recently after the tidal wave there. Well, it turns out that if you start up a nuclear reactor and then shut it down, there's no problem at all. It shuts down. It goes from 100% power to zero, and that's the end of it. But if you operate a nuclear reactor for a year or so and then try to shut it down, it doesn't shut down completely. It will remain at about 6.5% of its operating power level. Now, if we have a nuclear reactor which is generating 1,000 megawatts of electricity, that's 1,000 million watts, a billion watts, and we try to shut that down and we find that it's still operating at 65 megawatts of power, that's a big problem because that is sufficient power to melt the fuel in the reactor and do uh, a lot of damage to the environment and to the reactor itself, of course. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that when nuclear fission occurs, you have the two fragments coming out along with two or maybe three neutrons. But these fragments are still neutron heavy. They have more neutrons than they should have. And what happens when you have more neutrons than you should have in a nucleus is that some of those neutrons will change into protons, electrons, and neutrinos. This is the reaction. If you have a neutron completely isolated from a nucleus, this reaction will occur with a half-life of about 10 minutes. If you have a neutron in a nucleus in which the relative numbers of protons and neutrons are on the line of stability, that's the black line on the graph behind me here, then that neutron will have an extremely long lifetime, perhaps as long as the life of the universe. But if you are in the range shown here by this teal color behind me, where there are too many neutrons in the nucleus, the neutrons will do what free neutrons do. They will convert themselves into protons plus electrons plus neutrinos. So we talk about the 200 MeV, millions of electron volts of energy, that are released in uh, fission. But only about 180 MeV are released in the kinetic energy of the fission products. There is another 20 MeV of energy which shows up later when the excess neutrons in each of these fission products decay and produce electrons, protons, and neutrinos. This process takes place over a period of time. At the beginning, it's about 6.5% of the total re uh, reaction energy. Now, you might think that uh, 20 MeV is more than 6.5% of the 200 MeV we're talking about. It's more like 10%. So what happens to the rest of it? What happens to that other 3.5%? Well, a strange thing happens. That energy is released as neutrinos. Neutrinos are very small particles, no electrical charge, very little mass, that are extremely hard to detect. Basically, there are neutrinos passing through my body every second that I'm alive, 
and they have no effect on it. Neutrinos have such a small probability of interacting with ordinary matter that they are one of the candidates for the dark matter that the astronomers claim is filling our universe. The neutrinos were uh, hypothesized by Fermi, Enrico Fermi, because he observed that the electrons, which come from uh, neutron decay into protons and electrons, don't have just a single energy. They have a lot of different energies. So part of the energy in this reaction is coming out in a form that we can't see anymore. And it's kind of lucky for us in terms of the nuclear reactors because the neutrino, neutrinos just carry the energy away and we never see them again. Uh, but the rest of it, the other 15 or so uh, MeV, can heat up the fuel elements to a very uncomfortable level. So it's necessary to continue cooling the reactor even after you've turned it off. And if your cooling relies on the energy that the reactor was formerly generating, uh, then you're in trouble. Then you have to get the cooling uh, pumps operating either from uh, diesel generators or from another power plant. And if the disaster that has befallen your plant is as bad as the one in Japan, then all the power lines coming in and out of your power plant are gone. And your diesel generators have flooded because you foolishly put them in the basement instead of up on a high level. So that's why nuclear reactors are so dangerous when you try to turn them off suddenly. Because there's some energy that gets released slowly over the course of days and weeks, and it's enough energy to do serious damage to the reactor and to its environment. 